Hello, I'm Rob Martinez, State Historian of New Mexico, and this is New Mexico History in 10 Minutes. Today I want to talk to you about Spanish exploration. We know names like Cortez, Soto, Coronado, Oñate, Spaniards who explored Mexico and North America in the 1500s. But in the 1700s, there was more exploration in the area of New Mexico and surrounding areas by Spanish people. Before Lewis and Clark, there was Juan Maria Antonio Rivera in 1765. He was from the area of San Bartolomé in Chihuahua, Mexico, and was the descendant of New Mexicans who had fled the area uh, after the 1680 Pueblo Revolt. Well, by 1765, he's in New Mexico, and the governor at that time, Tomás Vélez Cachupín, he wanted to know more about the surrounding area, especially to the north. So he sent Rivera and some uh, soldier colonists, um, explorers, and Native American people uh, from uh, various uh, Pueblo communities and Genisaro communities to uh, see what was going on in the north. And he kept a journal, and what's fascinating is he went up into what we now call Colorado and Utah, and he pretty much got a good taste of what the terrain was like and the Ute people up there, the native peoples that were living there. These were uh, people that the New Mexicans would sometimes go to war with and sometimes trade with. There, there were trails up there well known by Native Americans for a very long time, but also there were uh, Spanish traders who had gone into that area already. So that was an important uh, foray outside of the Spanish realms in the 1760s. Now, in the 1770s, you need to know about a man named Fray Francisco Atanasio Dominguez. He was a priest, and he was sent to New Mexico in 1776 to do two things, to make a report on the mission churches of New Mexico, a report that would include uh, priests, people, and descriptions of the churches here, but also to explore and find a route to California, to Monterrey. Well, he brought a young priest with him named Fray Silvestre Vélez de Escalante. So their expedition consisted of about 10 people, 10 men uh, themselves, and a Spaniard named Bernardo Miera y Pacheco, who had come to New Mexico Oh, probably in the 1740s, it looks like. And um, he was from uh, northern Spain, the mountains of Burgos. He was an artist, an engineer, and a cartographer. So this group also took with them uh, Hispanic people and Native American people as explorers and guides to go into this area uh, just northwest of Santa Fe and Abiquiu, New Mexico. So they go around the summer of 1776. Think about that. Uh, what's going on on the east coast of North America around July 4, 1776? Well, the United States of America is being born. It's being created. Well, over here in New Mexico, we have Spanish priests exploring uh, the Great Basin, exploring a, a good part of the southwest uh, they went uh, into the area that uh, Rivera had known, and they're the first Europeans to go into uh, that area of the Colorado River and the Great Salt Lake. Um, they uh, explore and come into contact with Paiute Indians, uh, Ute groups, and they keep a diary that gives a great description of the terrain, of the people, how they dress, and they had some dangerous situations with uh, some very... Uh, harsh climates and harsh uh, topography, and they fail in their uh, mission to get to Monterrey, California, because it starts to get late in the year, it's too cold, so they end up go going south from that part of Utah and coming back to Santa Fe and New Mexico. But their journey is important because it lays out a good amount of the Southwest and even though uh, Mirai Pacheco made a map of the area that was not very accurate, it's still the first time 
that we get a, a sense of this area from people who are not Native American. So that is uh, very uh, significant because um, Spain is uh, starting to get a, a very shaky grip on this part of the world. There's a lot of uh, attacks by nomadic Native American people and the Spanish presence is not very strong. Add to that that you have a new nation uh, that's very aggressive and young and energetic, the United States uh, blooming and developing into the late 1700s and the presence of the French. Uh, it's, it's quite a mix of uh, uh, nationalistic energies and different kinds of people. Well, the other thing that is important is that report that Dominguez made in 1776. He's from Mexico City. He's a city guy, a city dweller, and he uh, comes here and he has a kind of a, an arrogant uh, attitude towards the local people and the local culture, and it shows. He ha says that the churches here are ugly, the architecture is not beautiful. He's used to stone European looking cathedrals and churches that you can see in places like Mexico City, Zacatecas, and Puebla, and what's now Mexico. And so he uh, is not too patient with our architecture here in New Mexico or with the people. He describes the uh, Spanish people here as barely Spanish, as passing for Spanish. You could look at that many ways. He could have been saying that they're almost Spanish, but he was also saying between the lines that there's something different about us. And what he meant was that we were uh, mixed blood with Native American people. And also there was that idea that in Mexico City uh, and places like that, the big, the big cities, if you were a castizo or mestizo trying to pass as a Spaniard, you could get in trouble for dressing as a Spaniard or uh, uh, carrying on as if you were Espanol and were not. So with that, we get a pretty good idea of what we New Mexicans were like in the 1770s. Uh, when he's in places like Alburquerque or Santa Cruz or Santa Fe, he says um, they, they, are, uh, they pass for Spaniards, um, they, they speak uh, their own kind of Spanish, which again goes to the heart of the fact that our Spanish was not like what you were hearing in more cultured and educated places like Mexico City or Guadalajara. So already our culture is developing in a different direction uh, than you would find in big urban centers. About the people in uh, Trampas, he says, uh, there's very little good blood here, or there are few people of good blood, meaning Spanish. Um, but he says they're, they're, it's slight, there's some Spanish blood, but very little. And that uh, the people there are merry, they're happy, uh, they know how to have a good time. And then of the Genisaro people of Abiquiu, he just says something like, um, this is what happens uh, in a den of devils. Uh, the idle minds of these people turns them into the kind of folks that he disdained. So um, it's a very important document. Uh, he describes the clergy as uh, being lax, that they don't keep good records, that there's liturgical abuses. Some of them are heavy drinkers. Um, some of them are morally lacking, he says. So um, it gives an idea that it's definitely a frontier area uh, with um, rough-hewn uh, architecture, rough-hewn people, uh, a, a rough uh, folk uh, Catholicism that's a blend of old practices and Puebloan uh, spirituality, uh, making its way into the local culture and Genisaro people with their ways also coming into the Spanish uh, cultural um, mix. So I think it's an important document, the mission report of New Mexico by Fray Francisco Atanasio Dominguez from 1776. Also uh, that uh, um, journal uh, kept by Escalante about the Dominguez Escalante uh, expedition is significant. And it's also going to lead to uh, major shifts in New Mexico within the next 10 years because New Mexico is under siege by uh, Comanche, warriors, Apache, Ute, uh, Kiowa. 
different nomadic tribes that are p exerting pressure on New Mexico, on the Pueblos, on uh, the Spanish settlers. So that is what we will be discussing next on New Mexico History in 10 Minutes. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Hasta luego. Goodbye.